Welcome to part 2 of this stylized animated forest meadow blender tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous parts, then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So in the previous parts, we created the tree models, and in this part we're going to be making the grass and the plants and the flowers. And if you'd like to purchase the finished project files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, links are in the description. Now before we continue with this part, I wanted to let you know about my sci-fi construction robot tutorial series. So it's an 11 part tutorial series and I show you step by step in real time how to create this rigged animated sci-fi construction robot. If you're interested in learning more about the course then you can find the course trailer video with the link in the description and you can find the product pages with the links in the description. So let's start by creating the grass 3D models. So I'm just going to press shift C to make sure my 3D cursor is in the very center there of the 3D scene and then also I want to hide the trees. So in the previous part we added the trees to this color collection, so I'll click on this button here just to hide the trees. And also we can hide the empties because we don't need that. So let's go to the add menu with shift A, and I'm going to go to mesh, and I'm just going to add a plane. And I'm going to rotate the plane, I'll rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees and hit enter, and then because I rotated that I'll press ctrl A and I want to apply the rotation. So I'm now going to go into edit mode with the tab key, and I want to make it much smaller so it's a better size, so I'm going to scale the entire thing down by 0.2, hit enter, and then I can just zoom into the object. So we're going to be creating five different grass objects. A few of them are going to be single blades of grass, and then a few of them will be some grass clumps. So I'm going to scale this object down on the x-axis. We can also turn off the proportional editing here because we don't need it. So I'll scale it down, and then I can bring it up on the z-axis because I want the origin point to be close here to the bottom because that is where it's going to come up from the ground wherever the origin point is. Let's go back into edit mode, and I'm going to scale the entire thing down a bit more. I can also box select the top and bring it down a little bit. and then. Let's select the bottom and I'll scale that up a little bit and we'll select the two top vertices and I can extrude them and then I can scale them and I want to scale them together. So after I hit S to scale, I'll type zero and then enter so that they are scaled together. Then I can press the M key and I'm going to merge by distance so that they're going to be merged together. So now we have the low poly grass blades and I'm making them low poly to kind of make them look stylized, but also I want them to be very low poly so they don't lag the scene too much because we are going to be adding many of them into the 3D scene. Now before we continue to make all the grass blades, I do want to create that vertex group because we're going to be adding the wind animation to this object as well. Because I don't want the bottom of the grass to be moved by the wind, because if the bottom of the grass was being moved by the displace modifier to make it look like it's windy, then it would kind of just be moving along the ground and it wouldn't look realistic, so I just want the top parts to be moved by the displacement. So what we're going to do is just box select the top of the grass but not the bottom. Then we're going to go over here to the object data properties, and just like we did with the trees, I'll click on the plus here to add a new vertex group, and then we'll click on assign. This way, just this part will be moved when we add that displacement with the noise. All right, so now we can just duplicate this to make all the grass blades. So I'm going to go back to object mode. This is going to be the first one. I'll press shift D to duplicate and move this over and make another one. But then this one, if I go into edit mode, I want to scale the entire thing down so it's more thin and kind of rotate it over to the other side and bring it down a little bit so it's a bit smaller. So we have another one that's smaller. Then I can select this one again and I'll duplicate this. And then this one here, I'll have three different blades of grass together in a clump. So I'll go into edit mode and I can kind of box select these, maybe scale them down a bit. I can duplicate it with shift D and I can give it a random rotation, rotate it on the z-axis, and maybe select these and kind of move them up a little bit, something like that. And then I will select an entire blade of grass again and duplicate it and kind of rotate it over to the other side, move it over there. And then this one, I want to kind of have it rotating over more. So I'm going to just select the top part and kind of move it down here and rotate it. And then I can press Control R to add a loop cut and I can left click and right click so it stays in the center. And also because we added new geometry there, I wanna go here to the vertex group again and just box select that part there and then click on assign. So if I deselect everything and then just click on select, you can see all the top part is selected but not the bottom. All right, so I'll box select these, kind of move them up and rotate them, maybe rotate this over so that we have one blade of grass which is kind of 
rotate it over more. And make sure it is in the very center, the origin point there. And I don't want it to be too high up because the grass might look like it's floating. So just bring it down slightly, so something like that. All right, that is good. We'll go back to object mode. I'll press Shift D to duplicate. We'll make another one. And we're gonna have two more, and these ones are gonna have a lot more blades of grass. So we'll go into edit mode, and we just wanna make it look more unique and different from the other one, because we wanna make them look different and more random. So I'll kind of give these a random rotation, maybe bring this up a bit, maybe make a thicker one. I can also press the L key to select that entire grass blade and let's duplicate it and rotate it. We'll make another one over here. And this one I could maybe make like a really thin blade of grass. So I'll bring this way down, rotate that over. All right, so there's another one. Maybe select this entire piece, rotate it over a bit and then I could duplicate it and make another one here. And this one, maybe I could scale it up a little bit. And let's select these pieces here, just kind of rotate that up. So this is pretty easy modeling. It does take a little bit of time, but it's really not too hard to do. All right, so that's gonna be it for the fourth one. So I'll just do one more, and this one is gonna be the biggest grass clump. So I'll duplicate this, go into edit mode, and I can start by just making it look a bit more random, so kind of rotating a few things, just making it look a bit more different. Maybe we'll bring this one up here, make this one kind of a long one. Maybe make it a little bit thinner. I can also select the entire thing and give it a random rotation. Let's maybe select this one and scale it and make this one a bit smaller. And then I can also select the entire thing and press Shift D to duplicate and kind of rotate it over. And we'll kind of bring these in here. And some of these grass blades are kind of going through each other too much. So I'm gonna move them out a little bit. Just kind of move some of these grass blades away a bit so they're not going through each other quite as much. Maybe rotate this one down and kind of have it coming off to the side a little bit like that. All right, that is pretty good. And then just at the very end here, if I go to the vertex select, I just want to make sure that the vertex group is correct. So I'm going to deselect everything. And here on the vertex group, we're going to click on select. And you can see that everything up here is selected, but in the bottom is not selected. So that's exactly what we want. All right, and actually this one here, I wanna go into edit mode and I'll just scale the entire thing up a little bit so it is the biggest. All right, so that is pretty good. So we now have some different blades of grass. So let's select all the grass blades and I'll hit the M key to move them. We'll click on new collection and I'm just gonna rename this to grass and then click on okay. So now you can see they've been added into their grass collection. And then we could name these if we want to. So I'll just rename all these to grass one through five. And the last one here, grass five. So it just keeps the Blender file nice and organized. And then I do wanna box select all of these objects here and I'll use the object context menu and I wanna shade them smooth. So they're all shaded smooth. So now let's create the material for the grass. So I'll just select one of the grass blades. We'll go here to the materials. Let's click on new to add a new material and I can just call it grass. And then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select all of the other grass blades. And then lastly, shift select this one here, which has the material. So I'm selecting this one last. And then to add the same material to all the grass, I can press Control L and we're gonna use the link and transfer data and we're gonna link the materials. So now they all have the same grass material. So to make the material, let's click over here to go to the shading workspace and I will just zoom into the grass. And again, I am in the material preview just to preview the materials because we haven't set up the lighting yet. So for this material, I will go to the add menu and I'm gonna start by searching for a gradient texture. Let's drop the gradient here and I can Control Shift and select it to preview it. And I'm adding a gradient because I want the bottom of the grass to be a darker green and the top of the grass to be a lighter green. Also with the gradient selected, I'll press Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And let's use the object coordinates so the object will go into the vector. So now you can see the gradient is lighter over here and darker over here. And so I wanna rotate it so we can use the rotation Y to rotate the gradient. So I'll just type in 90. So now you can see it's black down here and then it's whiter up here. But then I wanna change the colors, so I'll go to the add menu and I'm just going to search for the mix color and we'll put the mix color here after the gradient so just stick it right there and this gradient color can go into the factor so this way the light and dark values of the gradient are going to determine what parts will be color A and what parts will be color B so now here on color A this is going to be the dark green so I'll make it a saturated dark green color and then here on color B this one is going to be kind of like a lighter green so I'll make that a bit brighter, make it kind of like a 
yellowish greenish color. And then one more thing that I want to do real quick to the objects is I want to select all the objects and I'll go into edit mode and I'll select all of them. And I think I want to scale all of the objects up on the Z axis just so that they're a little bit taller and then I can bring them up on the Z axis just a little bit. So I just want to make those grass blades a little bit taller. So now you can see that they are darker down here and then lighter up here. So let's take the mix result and I can put that into the base color of the shader and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And then this roughness here, I'm going to turn that up to like a 0.8 so it is more rough. And that is it for the grass blades material, so it is pretty simple. But I am going for a stylized look, so I want to keep the materials pretty simple. Let's save this again with Control S, and I'll go back here to the layout. So I now want to add that wind animation. So what we're going to do is turn on the trees right here, just so I can see the trees. And let's just select one of the trees, and then I'm going to hold down the Shift key and just select one of the grass blades. And I actually want to select the tree last, so select one of the grass blades, hold down the Shift key, select one of the trees and then I want to copy the modifiers so that it has the same displace modifier with the wind effect. So I will press Control L and we are going to click on copy modifiers. So now that I've copied the modifier of the tree here I can just click on this to just hide it. All right let's zoom in here and I can now press the spacebar to play and you can see now it is moving. However you can see the entire thing is moving so that doesn't really look right because the entire blade of grass is moving and so the bottom of the grass where the roots are would be just moving along the grass surface. So to fix this, let's go here to the modifiers and we want to change the vertex group. So because we copied the displace modifier, it's using the wrong vertex group. So let's click here and we can instead choose the group which was on this object. So now you can see it looks like the grass is being blown around by the wind. And actually this tree wind noise, if you want to, you can just rename it to wind noise because it's going to be the wind noise for all the objects. So wind noise. And then I actually want to make the strength a little bit stronger on these objects. So here in the strength, I'll turn this up to a 0.7 so it's a little bit stronger. Now that might look like a little bit of a strong wind right now, but I found that this is actually a pretty good strength because once the grass is in the entire scene and once you're really far away from it, it'll be a little bit harder to see the actual grass moving. So I find that a 0.7 is pretty good. So I now want to copy this modifier onto all the other objects. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all the other grass blades. And then lastly, shift select this one here with the modifier. Again, we're going to press control L and we're going to copy the modifiers. And now they all have that modifier. All right, so that is it for the grass. So I can just click here just to hide the grass collection. And let's save this again with control S. So we're now going to be creating the flowers. So for the flower, I will go to the add menu. Let's go here to mesh and I'm going to add a circle. Now, right after I add the circle right behind me, you can click here on the add circle settings. And I want to make this very low poly to look stylized, but also because we're going to be adding many of them all over the scene. So the performance will be better if they're lower poly. So the vertices here, I'm going to turn this down to five so that it is kind of a stylized grass shape. And then I can close the add circle settings. So because this is the flower, it should be much smaller. So I'm going to scale this object way down and I'll type in 0 0.05, hit enter, and then I can press control A and we'll apply the scale. So that's the new default size of the object. And then let's go into edit mode and I want to extrude this out. So I'll hit E and then I'm going to hit S and we're going to scale the entire thing out just a little bit, just like that. And then I can hold down the alt key and select that loop right there in the center and I'll press F to fill the faces there. So now what I can do is go to top view and I'm going to go here to the edge select. And I'm going to select each edge here and I'll hit E to extrude and then I can scale it down and we're going to use this to create each one of the petals. So I'm just going to extrude out the edge and then scale it and we'll do that for all five of them here. So extrude that out and then scale it. So now that we've created all those petals, I want to go to the face select and I'm going to select both of these faces and press F to fill that and select these faces and fill that with the F key and just continue to do that so that these two faces are one face instead. And then if you need to just go to the vertex select, you can move some of the vertices around. So now you can see we have a nice simple low poly flower. And then I actually want it to be a little bit more 3D. So what I'm going to do is go to the face select. I'll select this face and we will delete it. So delete the faces and I can go back to the vertex select. I'll hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices there. And I'm going to extrude it and then I'm going to scale it. And then I will type zero and then enter. So that way they're all being scaled in. And then I'm going to merge them and I'll merge by distance so that they're all joined together into one vertex. 
So now what I can do is hold down the shift key and I'm just gonna shift and select all of the vertices on the outside and also the one in the middle. And I will bring the entire thing up on the Z axis. So just bring it up like that so that the flower is a bit more 3D. And that is pretty good. And then go back to object mode and I'll use the object context menu and shade it smooth. So we'll go back into edit mode and I wanna create the flower stem. So I'm just going to go to the edge select and select one of these edges and I'll duplicate it and bring it into the center. And I can scale it way down and bring it right up here inside the center of the flower. And then I can extrude it, we'll extrude it down on the Z axis like this, maybe scale it up a little bit and move it over to the side, and then extrude it down again and rotate it, maybe scale it up a little bit more and then extrude it again, all right? And I think I wanna select the entire thing and make it a little bit more thin and also scale the entire thing down a little bit and kind of bring that up there, just stick it up there into the flower. Let's maybe go here to the vertex select, box select the stem and kind of bring it down a little bit. It's a little bit longer, all right. Then I can select the entire thing. And again, I want the origin point to be at the very bottom. So I'll just bring all the vertices up here and just stick it right there. And then just like we did before with the grass, I wanna have the flowers being moved in the wind. And so instead of adding the vertex group after we've duplicated them all, it'll save a lot of time if we do it right now. So what I'm gonna do is box select the bottom part here, and then I can press Control I. So Control I will invert the selection so everything else is selected. We'll go here to the object data properties, and here on the vertex groups, we'll click on the plus here to add a new vertex group, and then just click on assign. So then when we add the displace modifier for the animation, then we can add this as the vertex group. Let's also go into wireframe, and I'm gonna box select the top of the flower and just kind of rotate it over a little bit so it's just rotated slightly. All right, and then before I duplicate them and make all the other flowers, I do wanna add the materials. So we'll go over here to the shading workspace. I'm gonna zoom into the flower and make sure you're in the material preview. And let's click on new here to add a new material. And right here on the material name, I wanna rename this to flower petals. Now, when I duplicate the flowers, I want the flowers to randomly be generated between purple flowers and white flowers. So to do this, I can go to the add menu and I'm gonna add the object info node and we'll drop this here. Now the random value, this can go into the base color. And so this time, every time we duplicate the object, it'll randomly be generated between colors from white to black. However, I want to control the colors, so I'll go to the add menu, and we're going to search for the color ramp. We'll put the color ramp in between these two nodes. Now, right here on the color ramp, we can make the colors, but first I want to take the linear here, and I want to change it to constant instead, and that way there won't be any blending. So I can now just drag this white tab, I'm going to drag it kind of over to about here, and then this black tab here, this is instead going to be a purple color. So I'll make it kind of a bluish, brightish purple color. And if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using, the hex value for this purple color is going to be 4C. 3, 1, FF. Now I also wanna create the yellow center, so let's go into edit mode. I'll go to the face select, and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select all of these faces here. And over here on the side panel, we'll click on the plus to add a new material in the slot. We'll click on new, and I can rename this to flower center. And then just click on the assign button. And then this will be a very simple material. All we're gonna do is change the base color to a yellow color, and the hex value that I'm using is 37AB00. And then let's deselect everything. We're gonna press the L key with our mouse hovered over the stem. We'll click on the plus here, click on new to add a new material, and I can rename this to flower stem. And then we'll click on the assign button. And then this as well is just gonna be a very simple material. So we're just gonna make the base color a bright green. And the hex value that I'm using is 22DA00. So now we have a basic flower object. Let's press Control S to save, and I'll go back here to the layout. And let me just show you, you don't have to duplicate these, but if I duplicate this, you can see that randomly each flower or each object of the flowers is gonna be either white or purple. So I'll just delete those. Now let's also copy the wind modifier. So I'm gonna open up the grass here. Just open up the grass collection and unhide it. And I'm just gonna select the flower and then I'll shift select any of the grass blades. And I can press Control L and we're gonna click on copy modifiers. So if I play this now, you can see the flowers moving as well. So I can now just hide the grass. All right, so now I want to duplicate this object and make some different clumps of flowers. So I will duplicate this object, move it over here. I'll go into edit mode and I can start by moving this over and then I can duplicate it and I can rotate it over on the Z axis 
bring that over there. And then let's just deselect these bottom faces here and I can rotate the flower over just to make it look a bit more different. So now we have two different flowers, although this one I don't want it to be overlapping the other one. So I will select the entire thing and I'll move it over just a little bit. All right, so we now have two different clumps of flowers. I'll select this one and duplicate it again. And then this one here is gonna have three and then we'll have one more which will have five. So I'll go into edit mode and I'm gonna hover my mouse over these objects and press the L key to select the linked vertices. And let's just rotate this one over a bit and then I can duplicate it, rotate this one over this one, maybe I could scale down a little bit and just like bring it over here, right? Maybe move that back a bit. All right, so that's our third clump. Let's duplicate this entire thing one more time and we'll go into edit mode. And then again, we're just gonna select the flowers and I can just make them look a little bit more different and unique. Maybe rotate this one over a little bit. All right, like that. And then select this flower here. Let's go to top view and I'm gonna rotate this one over and then I can make two more. So I'll duplicate this again and again. All right, bring that over there. Maybe bring this flower up a little bit so that there are five of them. And so now we have four different flower objects. So I'm gonna select all the flower objects. I'll press M to move them and we're gonna choose new collection and I can just call this flowers. We'll click on okay. And then if you want to, just to keep the scene nicely organized, we can rename all these. So I'll just rename these flowers. So flowers one, two, three, and four. All right, so now we can just close the flowers collection and I'll stop the animation and let's just hide the flowers collection. All right, so we're now gonna be creating some other plants which are gonna have some orange flowers. So again, I'll press shift C to center the 3D cursor and and I'll go to the add menu and let's add a plane. And I'm gonna scale this plane way down to 0 0.2 so it is a better size. So just scale it to 0 0.2, press Control A and we will apply the scale. Let's also press the M key. We're gonna move this into a new collection. I'll call the collection plants and then click on OK. So it's in its own collection. Let's go into edit mode and I wanna scale this down to maybe about half the size on the Y axis. Then I'll press Control R to add a loop cut and I'll scroll my mouse wheel out until there are three cuts and I'll left click and right click so they stay in the center. Then I can select the two ones here on the side and I'll scale this in so it is smaller and then select these two and I'll scale them in so they're smaller and maybe move this out a little bit. And then I can go to the edge select. I'll select this edge and shift select this edge and I can scale these in as well, just like that. So we have the basic leaf shape. So let's now go to front view and I will go to wireframe and we'll go here to the vertex select. I'm just gonna box select the vertices and bring them up here. And then I can hit B for the box select and I can click and drag with my middle mouse wheel to deselect some of the vertices and bring them up and just continue to do that. So B for the box select, click and drag with my middle mouse wheel to deselect and then just move it over. And we're just gonna kind of rotate that over. Maybe bring it in a little bit and also bring the entire leaf over into the center and maybe rotate it up a little bit. So if I go back to solid view, you can see we now have a leaf which is coming up and I might wanna even bring that down a little bit more. All right, just like that. Let's use the object context menu in object mode to shade the object smooth. And then before I duplicate the leaves, I wanna add them to the vertex group. So let's just box select the top part of the leaf, but not the bottom. And then here on the object data properties, let's go to the vertex groups. We'll click on plus to add a new vertex group and then click on assign. All right, so now I'll select the entire thing and I'll go to top view and I wanna have five different leaves. So I'll duplicate the leaf and rotate it over. Let's kind of bring it over here, give it a slightly random rotation, maybe scale it down on the Z axis and just give it a slightly different random shape and size. We'll duplicate this again, move it over here and then box select it and deselect that area. And then we'll deselect the bottom part, deselect that and maybe bring it up a little bit and bring it out. Deselect that, all right, that's good. And just select that piece, kind of rotate that over. And we'll duplicate it again, let's make another one. You can double tap the R key to enable the trackball rotation. Maybe we'll make this one a bit smaller, kind of down here. Rotate that over, all right, like that. Duplicate it again, we'll make one more, we'll scale this one up, maybe we'll have this one coming up a lot more. All right, go into wireframe, and I'm just gonna deselect the bottom parts right here and then I can rotate it a little bit more so it's going up and we'll select the entire thing and move that over. So something like that. 
So now let's make a material for the leaves. So let's click over here to go to the shading workspace. I'll hold down the Z button and move my mouse down into the material preview. Now this material is gonna be pretty similar to the tree material that we already made. So let's click on that drop down here and we're gonna add the leaves material. But then I'll click on this button here to duplicate the material and I can rename it to plants. So now it is a separate material and we can change some of the settings. So right here I am gonna use the generated texture coordinate. So that way when we move the object or when the object is moved by the modifier, the wind modifier, it won't move the texture around. And then let's change some of the noise texture settings. So I'll turn the scale to eight and also leave the other settings how they are. Now, as far as the colors go, I do wanna make them a bit more contrasty. So I'll drag this tab out here and then I'll drag this tab kind of out to about there. And then for the colors, I am gonna make them a bit more darker colors. And if you wanna use the same colors that I'm using, this lighter one here, this is going to be a hex value of 486F14. And then this one here, which is slightly darker, a darker green, this is gonna be 305511. And then also you can see this has the object coordinates with the hue saturation values, so that whenever I duplicate it, it'll be a slightly different random color. Now I do wanna change the color slightly. So this hue saturation value here, I'm gonna turn this one up to a 0.5. And this one here, the bottom one, I'm gonna turn up to a 1.3. So now if I duplicate this, you can see every time I duplicate it, it's randomly gonna be a different color. So some are lighter green and some are darker green. And that will add more variation to the scene. And also this roughness here, I think I will turn this down just a little bit to a 0.8. Now there's another thing that I wanna to do to this material and that is that I wanna add a little bit of a bump. So let's take this factor from the noise texture and I can put that under the normal, but then we need to convert it to bump data. So I'll go to the add menu. We're gonna search for the bump node and we'll put the bump node in between the noise factor and the normal. And I can just drag it down here drag this down here so the nodes aren't overlapping. And then we actually want the factor to going into the height value to convert it to bump data. And then it is way too strong. You can see how bumpy that is. So I'm gonna turn it to a very small number here of 0 0.06 on the string. So now if you kind of look here in the reflections, there's just a tiny little bit of a bump, but it is quite subtle. Let's press Control S to save. So let's go back over here to the layout, and I now wanna duplicate this plant, and then we're gonna have another one which will have some orange flowers. So I'll press Shift D to duplicate, bring it over here, and we can go into edit mode, and I basically in edit mode just wanna change kind of the shape of the leaves, maybe change the size of them, and I just wanna make a slightly different variation of the plant. So I'm just gonna select some of these pieces, kind of move them around and scale them just to make the plant look a little bit different from the previous one. So maybe move this one out a bit, maybe rotate it down a little bit, something like that. And also I can give it a random rotation. And also one thing that I'll do is just add one more leaf. So I'll press the L key with my mouse hovered over that leaf to select the entire thing. And I can duplicate it and we'll make another one kind of right over here. Stick it right there, and then if I select this leaf here, I could rotate this one over a little bit and maybe scale it down a little bit. All right, so then in the very center of this one, I'm gonna be adding the flowers, and they're gonna be orange flowers. So first, let's unhide the flowers right here, unhide the flower objects, and I am just going to select the one which has one flower. And I'll duplicate it and move it over here, and then we wanna move this into the plants collection. So I'll hit the M key, and we're gonna move it into plants. So now that it's been moved into the plants, we can just hide the flowers again. Let's go into the material preview and I want to bring this back and then I want to join these two objects together. So I'll first select the flower and then I'll shift select the plant and I'll press control J to join them together into one object. So now if I go into edit mode, I can just press the L key to select the linked vertices just to select these flowers here and I'll scale them and kind of move them over kind of like that and have kind of one flower over here. All right. And then let's just select the stem and we're gonna bring the stem in, kind of bring the stem right down there into the very center of the flower or in the very center of the plant. All right, maybe bring this part up a little bit like that. All right, so you can see now it's coming out of the center. And then I don't actually wanna use that stem material cause that is like a really bright green. So if I go here to the materials, I wanna click on the flower stem and hit the minus to get rid of it. And then to make sure that this has the plant instead, I'll go into edit mode, I'll deselect everything, just press the L key with your mouse hovered over the stem there. We wanna select the plants material and then just assign that. So now that it has that darker green material. 
Let's go into edit mode again, and we're gonna select both of the stem and the flower, and I'll duplicate it and kind of rotate it over, and we're just gonna have one more of them. So make sure that's kind of down there in the very center, and then just kind of rotate this one and have this flower going over to the other side. All right, so that is pretty good. Now I also wanna make these flowers be orange, so if I click on the flowers petals right here, I'm gonna click on this button here to duplicate the material so that it won't affect the other material for the other flowers in the scene. And I can double click on this and let's rename this to orange flowers. All right, orange flowers. Let's click here on the shading workspace and select the orange flowers. And I can delete the object info and I can delete the color ramp. And then here in the base color, we can just make this a bright orange color. And the exact color that I'm gonna be using here on the hex value will be FF5E00. So now we have some nice bright orange flowers. So let's click back over here to go to the layout and I will save this again. Another thing that I might do to make the modeling a bit better is I'll go into edit mode and I will go into wireframe and I'm just gonna box select all of these center pieces right here and I'm gonna scale them all down on the Z axis and I'll type zero and enter just so that they're all flat and I can go back to object mode. That's looking a bit better. And then also select both of these objects and using the object context menu, we're gonna shade them smooth. So I'm now gonna be creating some more plants, but these plants are actually gonna have thick leaves. So I'll just select this one here, and then I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, and let's drag this one over here. And let's go here to the modifiers, and I'm gonna click on Add Modifier, and I'm gonna to start to type Solidify. We're gonna add the Solidify modifier, and we can zoom in here, and we're just gonna turn up the thickness so that the leaves are a bit thicker. And then we're also gonna add a Subdivision Surface modifier, so I will press Control-1 to add a Subdivision Surface. If you scroll down here, you can see we want to turn the viewport and render just to one and then we can also turn the thickness up a little bit more so now we have some thick plants so now what i want to do is apply the solidify so once you've gotten the thickness that you want click on the drop down and apply the solidify and i now want to go into edit mode and i want to zoom in here to the center of the plants. And I wanna go here to the face select, and I just wanna select these bottom faces here, and I actually wanna delete them. So we're gonna select all of them, and you could actually scale them up a little bit more, like that, and then hit X, and we're gonna delete the faces. So now that they're all deleted, you can see that the bottom of the plants are gonna be a bit sharper. And then also, just to make these a bit more flat, let's go to the vertex select, We'll go into wireframe, and I'm just gonna box select the bottoms of the plant there. So just make sure those bottom parts are selected, and I'll scale them on the Z axis by zero, and then enter just so that they're nice and flat there. And then you can see that there are a few areas where there's kind of like an opening between the leaves. So we'll go back into edit mode. We'll select some of these leaves and just kind of move them over. Maybe rotate this one over a little bit. All right, that is a bit better. So they're kind of all going into that one center. And then I do want to apply the subdivision surface. So I'll click on the drop down here and click on apply. So I now want to duplicate this so that there are four different random variations of this type of plant. So I will duplicate it and move it over. And then I'll go into edit mode. And for this one, we're just gonna kind of rotate a few things so it has kind of a random rotation and a random scale, just kind of changing it so it looks a little bit different than the other plant. All right, so like that, I can also duplicate this one. And this one, we're gonna have like six different leaves. So I'll rotate this over here, all right? Maybe rotate both of these back into the center a little bit so it looks a little bit different than the other one. And then we will duplicate this one again. And then this one is only gonna have four of them. So we'll go into edit mode. We're just gonna select a few of them here. So maybe this one and this one, and I can delete the faces. And then these last ones here that are remaining, again, I just wanna kind of give them a random rotation and just make them look slightly different. So we're gonna select some of these leaves. We can move them. We can also rotate them up and we can scale them and just make the leaves look a bit more unique and a little bit different from the other ones. All right, and then I wanna duplicate this one more time. We'll go into edit mode, and this one I just wanna have three. So I'll select this one here and we'll delete the faces. We can select this leaf here. We'll go to top view, and I'm gonna rotate this one over, just stick it in there, bring it down a little bit. All right, select this one here, maybe rotate this up a little bit and scale it down a little bit. Again, just giving it a bit of variation so they look different. Maybe give this one a random rotation. All right, there we go. So we now have these four different variations, and these ones are the thick ones, and then we also have some thin ones here. Now these thin ones here, I want them to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna select both of these objects, and I'm gonna scale them down, and I'm gonna type 
0.7 and then enter. Then I can press Control A and apply the scale, so that's the object's new default size. And we can kind of bring these in here, so you can see these ones now are a bit bigger, but then these ones are kind of small. All right, so I now just want to add the same wind modifier to these objects. So let's just click here on the flowers to unhide them. And you can see when I unhid the flowers, these objects are actually a bit too small because the flowers are quite large. And also if I unhide the grass, you can see the grass is quite large. So what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key and I'm just going to select all of these plants here. So just select all the plants and I want to scale them up so that they're quite a bit bigger because the plants should be bigger than the flowers and the grass. We can actually move these over here to get them out of the way and if we select these flowers we can move them over so we can kind of see everything uh, with how big they are all right so that is a better size so now that i've scaled up these objects and made them bigger i want to press ctrl a and apply the scale so that is the uh, default object scale all right so now if i press the spacebar to play this we just need these plant objects to have the same wind so you can click and drag to box select all of the plants and then just lastly shift select one of the other objects and that object is going to be selected last so i can now press ctrl l we're going to copy the modifiers and now you can see they all have that really cool wind effect all right and then if you want to real quick you can rename all these so i'm going to rename this one to orange flower and then this one here this one i'm going to rename to small plant and actually i might rename this one to orange plant because i want them to all be called plant and then this here we can rename to plant one and plant two and plant three and plant four so orange plant plant one two three and four and then the small plant all right press Control s again to save and this will wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series so now all the plants and the foliage have been finished so i hope you're enjoying the tutorial so far and thank you for watching and if you'd like to purchase the finished project file and help support the channel, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are all in the description. And I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but if you'd like to learn how to create a sci-fi construction robot in Blender, then I've created this sci-fi construction robot tutorial course, and it's an 11 part tutorial series where I show you step by step in real time how to create this rigged and animated sci-fi construction robot. So if you'd like to check out the course, then you can find the product pages as well as the product trailer video with the links in the description. So in the next part we're going to be doing more of the scene setup so we'll be creating the ground object and we'll do some of the lighting and the HDRI sky background. So when the next part is released it's going to be right up there on the end screen and the link will be in the description. So I hope you're enjoying this so far, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next part.